In this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild a Power Stroke 6.0 uh, turbo. It's also the same as the 6.6 .6 Chevy Duramax. This is the rebuild kit that we use for this build. This is an upgraded 360 degree thrust bearing rebuild kit that has the brass bearing. So if you want to buy this kit, I will link to it in the description box. First, make sure you clean the bearing housing really well. It's a really good idea to at least soda blast it. and because there's a lot of carbon that builds up on the uh, actuator arm for the VGT system and it's a good idea to get that off. After you've done that, be sure to flush it really well with the pressure washer. There's a lot of oil feed journals in this housing so make sure you get them all. When you go to install this plug back in the bearing housing, be sure to add black RTV on the uh, farthest side away from the bearing housing. That way you don't get any inside the bearing housing. Then be sure to install the o-ring back above the VGT actuator piece and then install or put some oil down in there so you can make this uh, cap install a lot easier and make sure you wipe the oil on, on the, uh, the o-ring. After you do that then you can press the cap back in and then use the snap ring pliers. Actually next insert the I don't even know what you call this piece it's some kind of I guess gear and you have to make sure that you line up the teeth with this gear with the actuator arm here's a closer look where you meet the gears together the first gear of each of the uh, I guess each of the gears match together and then you push the yeah you <laughs> you push the rod in Once you've pushed the rod in, then you can install the cap. Now just give it a little tappy tappy. Just tap it in. Just a little tappy tappy. Maybe you guys remember that scene from Happy Gilmore. Next, install the C-clip to hold the cap in place. Next you can install this cap. This has an o-ring on it so you can oil that to make it go in easier. It also is threaded so you can put a bolt on it so you can pull it out really easy. When you go to put it in, just tap it in with a hammer really lightly. And then if it goes too far, then put the bolt in there and pull it back out a little bit so it's properly seated. Then install the C-clip to retain this cap in place. Now install the thrust spacer. Then add some oil and then install the thrust bearing. Now install the piston ring seal on the thrust collar. Add oil to the thrust collar and under the piston ring seal and then carefully insert it into the front seal plate. Next install the bearing housing o-ring. Then install the front seal plate onto the bearing housing. Notice that the arrow points to the oil feed side. If you happen to put the arrow in the wrong direction, then you'll most likely crack the front plate. Even if you don't crack the front plate, what will happen is that you're going to put the clock the compressor housing in the wrong direction. Be sure to lightly add some Loctite to these bolts and then do a torque sequence in the opposite, on opposite ends until the, the bolts are all tightened down and then make sure you go back over them because as you tighten it down it will loosen up on the opposite ends. Now install the piston ring seal on the turbine shaft. Make sure you note where the open end is because 
if you push it over with the open end first, usually it goes on a lot easier. And it also helps prevent you from bending the seal. Notice how I spread the gap over the turbine shaft rather than trying to force one side and then all the way around. It actually goes in a lot easier by spreading the gap. Add oil on and under the turbine seal so that it has pr plenty of lubrication for engine startup. Otherwise you can see wear if you don't oil this properly for startup purposes. Now insert your rear bearing and the spacer and then the front bearing. One thing to keep in mind with the power strokes is that there are three, set, three different sets of bearings and spacers and they're all different lengths. It doesn't matter which set you have as long as you have a matching set of bearings and the spacer. Now insert the turbine shaft with the bearings installed very carefully. Spin the shaft as you snap it in place. Spinning it helps the rear seal to align itself. Now install the compressor wheel. Remember this is a left hand thread wheel. So when you tighten it, you spin it in the uh, counterclockwise direction. Make sure you use a six point socket to tighten this. That way you don't damage the compressor wheel's nut. Now we balanced this beforehand so you don't have to make any marks on this when you go to tighten it if you don't want to because as long as you torque it down it will be in the exact position that it was torqued down when you balanced it. Usually the power strokes from what we've seen are off quite a bit on the balancing usually around like six or seven inch grams but we can get that down under one inch gram. Install the VGT solenoid. This allows your VGT system to work. It actuates the open and close of the veins. Then install the bracket that retains it and then the bolt that holds it down. Now install the compressor housing o-ring. This is really a two person job because you have to stretch it in place. Install the compressor housing now that you have the o-ring on. You can oil the o-ring if you want. I've never seen a reason why I needed to, so I just left it in this case. And then install all of the bolts that hold down the compressor housing. Bolt them down evenly from like a star pattern. That way it will not warp the cover. Here's a quick look at the VGT system opening and closing. That way you can kind of get an idea of how it works. The main problem with the power strokes is that the VGT system will lock up because the bearing housing will rust and expand and trap the unison ring in place. So be sure to blast it and paint it. That way you don't have an issue with that ever again. Take note of where the unison ring sits in relation to the dowel pin. When you insert the bearing housing into the turbine housing, be sure to line up the dowel pin on the bearing housing to the dowel pin slot on the turbine housing. But at the same time, you have to connect the VGT arm to the spot on, it, on the unison ring. Then tighten down the V-band clamp that holds the bearing housing to the turbine housing. If you like this video, you can always subscribe and watch more videos just like this one. 
If you have any video ideas that you'd like to see, then you can always comment them in the comment section. If you're interested in a build like this, you can always email me at turbolabamerica at gmail.com. If you're interested in the parts that are in this build, you can always go to the about box to see all the parts that I used in this build. I also do machine covers. If you need that service, you can always contact me for that.